people that they don't know anything about. They are looking for their family. Do you know this person? What do you know about this person? So I think. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today's date, the 24th of February, 2024. I'm with my uh, sister-in-law, uh, should I say the right honorable, Cynthia no. Carlton, otherwise known as Marty. Good morning, how are you? Very well, thank you. Well, you look wonderful. If I had it in me, I'll set up a subscription to send you up for Miss Dominica this morning, but I guess I'll have to wait for that to be done on another occasion. Cynthia, I thought it was important to talk with you. I've known you now for more than 30 years, and I, um, I've always seen you as a highly intelligent, patriotic Dominican. And as the shadows lengthen, I thought it important to record your memories of your childhood on Dominica, your parents, your children, education, for posterity, so that children coming up in the future will know what it was like to have been born in the Northeast, Margaret area, and... Uh, how it was in those days on the British rule, your education, agriculture, the society at the time, what you did for fun, um, you know, uh, coming to Roseau to go to high school, what it was like to work uh, in education and with uh, Phyllis Chandolfrey, the great Dominican social reformer and political leader and author, uh, who you named your daughter Phyllis afterwards. And it was that conversation that we had not too long ago when you told me how Phyllis was named after Phyllis and Orphe that said to me, well, all these years I've known Cynthia, I've never really taken time to sit down with her. So here's our opportunity. God bless you and your wonderful family of whom we're proud. So Cynthia, where were you born and when were you born? I was born in Marigat, where's to be exact, May 8th, 1944. Wonderful. So you were born in the middle of the war. You were born in the war years. Absolutely. In the days when they couldn't find any material to make clothes for me. Oh boy. I remember my mother saying she couldn't find any material. They had to buy a flower bag from a baker yes. to make my to make my layettes, as they call it. She I remember her telling me so. Then I couldn't find material. They go to Miss Collar and they couldn't get any. Miss Collar didn't yeah. have, which was in the middle of the war. Because as you know, as you may know, and we've written a book on that, the Germans were torpedoing ships in the yeah. Caribbean, so they could not get supplies of cloth, which was being imported, of course, in those days. Yeah, exactly what they're doing in the Red Sea now. Indeed, indeed. So let me ask you, who is your mother? Give us her name. My mother is Ivinia. Everybody know her from Weir's Flat. Her mother was Majon. And her father was Winston Abel. What was the last name? Her last name was Abel, A-B-E-L. And then she married into Alexander, a guy who came from, um, he came, her husband came from Grand Bay with an Alexander. But in those days, um, and what, so she was an Alex, she was a Abel and then Alexander. In those days, is it true that most of the people in Margaret came from, the Leeward Islands, like a St. Kitts, Santiago? I understand that. And that could be true. Are you talking about the slave trade? No, she didn't come from, um, she didn't come from those. I think, you know what, you could be right. I think she, they were saying that her great-grandmother came somewhere from St. Lucia. Okay. But it's true that in Dominica, my God is in the upper northeast. And people in Margaret and in Wesley speak a little different from the rest of Dominicans. Your accent is more like that of Antiguans. Yes. Yeah. Bring bring your camera more to the, um, that's, that's it. That's it right here. Um, what do you account for that difference in uh, in, in uh, accent, which they call Kokoi on the island? You know, I think it's the, edu well, the other part of Dominica, which is the East, they speak Patois. And we just, it was just plain English. And I would pray, we would pride ourselves in education. There was more clarity in our um, punctuation and the way we, we, announce, uh, we pronounce our words. There was more clarity. Um, it was not mixed up with the um, dialect of the um, Patois or the, uh, with Patois. So well, when you say patois here, you're speaking of French Creole because Dominique was once a French colony. Is that right? 
that northeast within it speaks so much of that. It came yeah. in, but our, our, our pronunciation was had more clarity. I understand. But I'm saying is the reason that was is many people. So, for instance, so you know, um, on my father's side, our family came from Antigua. And our family in uh, Margaret were the Joneses, Edward Jones, Ulika Jones, those people. And they came from Antigua. The, um, in those days, before 1940, Dominica was part of the Leeward Islands. So are you familiar with that, that uh, many people uh, came from the Leeward Islands? From where? The Leeward from Islands. Uh, Leeward Islands. Um, oh, no. Leeward Islands means Montserrat, St. Kitts, Antigua. It was. It is very interesting because I have my mother here. I have my mother here who is 97 years, and she's telling me that her people came from the French side. Okay, that's Miss Abel. Yes. Ivinia Abel. Yes. Yes. But you understand, have you been to Antigua? Briefly. Okay, so you you know how Antiguans speak? Yes, but I'm out. And you know that the people in Antigua, they speak very close in way of accent to the people in Marigat. You're familiar with that? Kind of, yes. I I would I I would bet to differ on that, but I can accept that. Okay. So tell me who your father was. Oh, my father was Cephas Robinson. And what did he do for a living? Jack of all trade. He was a builder. He was a barber. He was a metal metal bender. Most of all, he was um, he was a carpenter. His his main trade was carpentry. Outstanding. And what was the Robinson family in Margaret known for? It was a very well known family. Is that right? They were. Okay. And why were they well known? Education. Okay. Can you give me some of the members of that family names? Um, you had Keith Robinson, Geoff Robinson. Did he, when you when you mentioned the names, can you tell me what they did? So Keith, what did Keith do? Keith was in law enforcement. He was a policeman. He was law enforcement. Um, Geoff was in education. Um, when I knew him, he was a headmaster at the Dominica Grammar School. And yeah. then you had Joseph. He was a farmer. Very, very um, elegant farmer. He did a lot of pineapples and oranges, and he was very, very passionate about farming. You had Davis. Davis was into transportation. He had migrated to England, and then he came from England after a short, um, after a short time, and then he, he was a businessman. He did transportation and, and um other business like is that the one know? who was in Portsmouth? Yes, Davis. Okay. And then you had um Belgrave. You had Belgrave who was an education. He was a one time he was um chief education officer, then he was I think he was in the Ministry of Education. He was in education also. Then you had Champy, who was a public servant. He worked at the post office for a long time. He was in the postal um, service. Then you had Ernest, Ernest Robinson, who was in education. So a lot of them um, prided themselves in the education field. Was and there I, one by the name of Jim who was a surveyor? Well, I got into Jim. He's the last one. He's the youngest one. Okay. <laughs> he was a surveyor. So Ernest is before Jim, who was, Ernest is in education, so Jim was a surveyor. Was Ernest the same one as Bully, the one they call Bully? He's the same one that is Bully. And whatever I know, whatever I learn, I owe it to him because he took me under his wing, this Bully Robinson. And every afternoon after school, he had to look over my books and give me extra lessons for the next day. And every day, I don't mean two days of the week, I mean five days of the week, I had to go to lessons. and. If anybody had to get a whipping, he used to make me the example. You see, he used to call me and whip me for nothing to show the others that he can whip them. But everything oh. I learned today and what I know today, I owe it to Bully Robinson. 
Well, do you know, would it, would it surprise you to know that he taught me woodwork at the Dominican Grammar School? That is after he came from um, Puerto Rico. He did. I think he yeah, did go to Puerto that's Rico. That's correct. Yes, he was a woodwork master at the Dominican Grammar School in the 60s and 70s. Actually, he had a dormitory that he lived in at the grammar school below the hostel. Yeah. Yes, so we, we, we saw him there. Um, and it's interesting because your sister who is my wife, of course, let the record reflect that my wife is the sister of Cynthia Carlton, a.k.a. Motti, and her name is Joan, but we also call her Bully. So I'm not sure where that came from, whether you're the one <laughs> who told others to call her that. But uh, tell me about, um, you know, what it was like growing up. Of course, you would not remember much of the war because it ended the following year in 45, but what was it like in the 40s and fifties. What were the first memories you had of Marika? What would I remember of Marika? Going to school. Um. So the war was 44, 45. In the fifties, I think as early as fifty two or in nineteen fifty, we had Hurricane Janet. Was it fifty or fifty five? I remember that when we had to go to school under the rain, in the floods, mm. and, you know, that sort of thing. After the hurricane... And what school did you attend? What was the first school you attend, attended? It was... Um, it used to be an Anglican church over at the... at um, the old police station. They used to call it the old police station. It was an Anglican church made into a, 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 an infant school. See. Um, so they no longer kept church? No, it wasn't church then. It was an old Anglican building and they had school in it. I, and, and there. So that was the first school you had to go to if you were in Marigat at that school. Infant that school. was like a kindergarten. Well, we didn't have that fancy name for it then. We call it infant school. Infant school, I see. Infant school, that is how we call it then. And um, did you have uniforms in those days? Eh? No. Did you have uniform? No. And that is why I, I didn't I didn't say kindergarten because we didn't call it kindergarten then. It was infant school. I see. Infant school. And you went there until you were eight. I see. You went there from five to eight. Yes. And then after what kind, eight, of, mm -hmm. what kind of subjects did they teach you in the um, infant school? Everything, including discipline. Okay. They taught you how to walk on the road, which side of the road to walk on. They teach you to be respectful. You did math and English. And in those days, we didn't have we didn't have a lot of materials. You had to go outside and pick up leaves to count. You had to pick Amazing. Up, you had to pick up sticks to count. And we, we wrote on slates. And we had to break the slate sometime to write on the slate because they were, we had a we had slate pencil slate pencils, but if you didn't have when the broken slate, you had to use the broken slate to write on the slate. Amazing. If, you, if, if all the slates were broken, you didn't have slates. You didn't have anything to write on. You didn't have... So, for, for the children of today who do not remember, I remember slates. I used a slate in, at the Roseau Mixed Infant School. It was like a square made of stone, a flat gray black stone. Is that not correct? Yes, some of them had a some of them had a, a, a binding around them, and some didn't have made, any. Binding. Made of wood, a wood binding. Yes, some had a binding, and I noticed you say, um, Roseau Infant School. So you remember we didn't call them any fancy kindergarten then; it was infant school. That's right. <laughs> and you wrote your numbers and your letters on the slate. Yes. Um. I am just so that uh, people who will uh, maybe um, not remember, well, just so for people who uh, may not recall those things, I am going to show you, uh, if you give me a moment, what uh, a, a, slit, a slit looked like, because that way people who... Um, We'll see this program in the future. We'll recognize yeah. what it looked like. Exactly. Is that what yeah. Exactly. And sometimes it was small, but that is a that's a good um example of it. And that was a fancy one. 
Yes, yes. And it was a very fancy one. Indeed, indeed. And they so had a, what the... they had a hole at the top, and you would put a they had a string on it, so we'd yes. hang them. To that the string was for the stylus. Yeah. Sometimes you would write so you wouldn't lose it. And right. that's what you scratched out your name, your letters, and so on. Outstanding. Did you have shoes in those days going to school? We we didn't we had shoes, but they were not for going to school. We went to school barefooted. Yes, indeed. You had to walk on the grass because yes, yes. it was pitch and it was hot. So we didn't yes. have um, we didn't have we didn't have shoes to go to school. So you're saying in Marigat the roads were already um, pitched or asphalted. They were asphalted already, yeah, when yes. I went to school. Yes. Um, any any teachers you remember apart from your uncle, um, um, Ernest, or, or Bully? Oh, in the beginning, um, the, the headmistress at my first school was Miss Mary Pascal. Okay. And then um, you had people like Vaughn. Her name was Vaughn, I think. For some reason, your voice has gone very soft. Is there any reason your voice has gone very soft? Abraham. Can you hear me? It's much better now. Somebody, a, a call was coming in. Okay. Um, Vaughn Abraham, you had Merle. What was Merle's name? Merle Samuel. Um... At one point, there was Trifenia, Trifenia Andrew. Um, so we had these young people, and there was Mrs. Doctrove. Um, mm -hmm. She used to be married to, the, she was not really from Margot, but she came into Margot. Her husband was a policeman, and then she was a teacher. So she taught at the infant school. She passed away a couple of, years, a couple of months ago, must be sometime this year at 99. She was Amazing. 99. Amazing. Um, that's Trossa Doctrove's mother. Yeah, I, I know the Doctrove. They lived on Pennish right. and Drive. She lived at, just at Goodwill on Green Hill, somewhere around there. Yeah, I know um, the house. Yes. Yeah. So she was if a teacher up, then. Yeah, if you're going up Pennish and Drive towards the hospital, they were on the left. Right. Left side of on Greens Lane, just on Greens Lane. Yes. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Did the future police chief of Dominica, Oliver N. Philip, was he a teacher in your day? No. Okay. So when you he knew was, him, he was already a policeman? He was already a policeman, and he wasn't even living in Margot then. But he used to visit us regularly. I knew him very well. How was he considered in Margot? He was very highly considered. His mother was married to my uncle. Okay. What was his mother's name? His mother was Clarice. His, her name was Clarice. I don't remember her last name, but her name was Clarice. And your uncle's name? Edward. Edward the Younger. So you're saying you're related then to Mr. Philip? Um, well, he look, he, he really look at me as, as relation because, I mean, we were very, very close. Yes. We were very, very close. Yes. And I was very close with his wife. I used to visit his house regularly, I know. All of his children, when they were babies, they don't know me, but I knew them because I was very close with his mother. And so That's was, Esther Philip. Esther Philip, very close with her. Yes, indeed. and uh, so I used to visit his house regularly when I went to. We've had house. the high honor and privilege of having Esther Philip here at our home. Yeah, we we were very people. close friends, and then everybody went there several ways, and I, I I I lost her, but I always think about her because she's somebody I like very much. Indeed, what about um? Classmates of yours who later became prominent. What about Edison James? Was he a classmate? <laughs> Edison was, yes, classmates in Roseau. We, we, we were like, Edison and I, we were very close because um, this is the thing. When you go to school in Roseau, everybody meets and everybody becomes part of one another. You know where everybody was living. So they go to the grammar school, you go to Wesley High School. Um, but you met, you met on the at, at the bridge, you met on the on the buses when you go in hub. If you have anything you share. And we were friends, all of us. 
But before Rozo, before you went to school in Rozo and you went to a different high school, he went to the Dominica Grammar School and you went to the Wesley High School. But did you did you meet in class in a classroom setting in Marigat when no. you were children? No, no, no. Okay. never met okay. anything. Um, um, what about Norris Prevost? Not, I don't really remember sitting in class with Edison. Okay. What and about Norris could Prevost? Be, you know, one year um, in our days could make a difference because somebody could leave, go, you go up every year into a class, so you miss a class with somebody. I cannot remember him in class, but I remember him in, 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 in school in Rosal. Let me ask you, what about Norris Prevo? Was he a classmate? Who, I cannot hear you. Who is it? Norris Prevo. He later became a businessman and a politician. I know Norris, but I was a classmate with Norris Prevo. Okay. I am wondering if I'm not a little older than these guys by just a, a, a smidge of a couple of years. Okay. So you, you, I didn't sit in class with these guys. I did sit in class with some of their brothers, but not Norris. Okay. He had an older brother. I, I remember his brothers, and I know them very well in Marigat. And there was one, I think, Sonny. His, his older brother, but I'm not Norris Privy. Let me ask you, in those days when you were going to school at the Anglican Church, where you went to the infant school, what would you have for breakfast? When we go to school, what would we have for breakfast? Yes. Well, it's bread and tea. What kind of tea? Many times it's bush tea or cocoa. Okay. You 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 had to you ate what you had at the time. So everybody didn't have cocoa. Cocoa was a special for weekend. I see. So, so during the week, so you drank. Listen to me. So you drank cocoa tea on the weekend as a special, but during the week you drank bush tea. Of course, yeah. <laughs> what what kind of bush? What kind of bush would you use? Mint. Well, mint is fancy. We had basilic and we had lime bush. Basil. Lime bush. Basil. And we call it basilic. We didn't call it basil. Um, basil is a fancy name, but it was re Israeli basil. And there was um it is strange that um the chrysanthemum that people here we use we used to drink chrysanthemum. We use chrysanthemum for tea at Very home. Good. And then if we were sick, we had other a bush we used to use, you know. But we chrysanthemum, we do chrysanthemum lime. And, what, about um, bay, what about the bay leaf? Do you use the bay leaf? Bay leaf, yes. We had bay leaf. So the what chrysanthemum is a flower, isn't it? What's that? The chrysanthemum, that's a flower, isn't it? It is a flower, but we use it for tea. And when I see chrysanthemum here, I always remember that we use it for tea. Was it a pretty flower? Beg your pardon? Was it a pretty flower? Yes. Your voice is so, going though, Gabriel. What is this? I can hear you fine. Yeah. I can and hear I you can very hear well. You. Yeah. I put up can you hear me now? And I can hardly hear you. That's why I wanted the, um, the computer. Yeah. I can hear you very well. Can you hear me? So you, I didn't hear your last question. No, I said the chrysanthemum was a beautiful flower. Is that not right? Yes, but it tastes very well. I remember the taste. I, I remember the taste distinctly. We didn't okay. always like it, but we did use it for tea. So would you say that the the, the pretty chrysanthemum flower is why you it, it enhanced your beauty? Is that right? No, we use the leaves, not the flowers. I see. Okay. Well, let's move food. along. And let me ask you, if you had bread in the morning, did you have bread with cheese or bread with butter? Oh, that was if you had it sometimes. Most most of the time you had to use rose breadfruit with your tea and boiled green banana with your tea to go to school. You didn't I always see. have it. There was, not, there was not always butter and cheese. Again, these were specials. I see. There was special. It's How bread did the fruit. People, yes, indeed. How did the people in Marigat in those days make their living? Well, there were farmers. A lot of them were farmers, but they work with um. They work with CDC, Colonial Development Corporation. A lot of them work with CDC. CDC okay. was, well, Colonial Development Corporation that. 
bought this land at Menvin Hall and they had these estates where people work on the estates. Um, they were planting, chopping. Um, what were they planting? Can you tell us what what um, what they were planting? What what uh, crops they grew? Well, they did. It was a lot of coconut, cocoa. They did soya beans. They did beans, and the beans they grow a lot of beans, but the beans were for mulching. So the main crops were oranges, grapefruit, cocoa, coconuts. Then when banana came in, they did banana. And but, uh, did Margaret become a major banana producer? They did. They did. Was it true did. that was it true that the banana plantations in Margaret were so extensive? That they actually flew planes over over the banana plantations to spray were, the banana leaves. They they had to do that. There were planes, um, spray planes flying over the over the crops, um, to spray them for uh, for leaf spots for any disease. Yeah. They couldn't afford to to spray them by hand anymore. They used to have men spraying them on their back with 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 things with guns and spraying them, but at one point, they had to spray them in the air with um, spray planes. Let me ask you this question, Miss Robinson. From the time you remember the development of the coconut, cocoa, grapefruit, and orange industry, and then the banana industry, would you say that uh, agriculture in Dominica has gone down? And if so, why? Tremendously. The agriculture has gone down. One, a lot of it is the infrastructure. Um, because people, they, they haven't got the equipment to work the land. They haven't got the people to work the land. And I guess it, the government, the government should, the government didn't put themselves in a position to, to get these things for the people to keep them in Dominica. And a lot of people left the country. So you haven't got people to work the land. You haven't got the equipment to work the land. And the in infrastructure didn't help because every time you have a hurricane, it washes away all the, the culverts and the roads. So people couldn't get to their garden. And the main thing is the equipment to work the land and the roads. Okay. Let me ask this going back to, let's say, uh, your, 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 your cuisine or what you ate. So you ate, as you said, uh, roasted breadfruit, bread, or boiled green banana. And you had bush tea in the morning, and the weekends you had cocoa tea. What about lunch? You went home for lunch when you were at infant school, didn't you? We went home for lunch. And and, and what did you have for lunch? Typically, what we had a typical lunch? Vision. You had fish. You had good lunch, but um, if it you see bread. There was a time there was a, there was no bread. If, as I said, there was no flour, there was no bread. And if the couple of bakeries we had, the bread was finished in the morning and you didn't get bread, you didn't have bread. You had to do bread food. And sometimes you didn't have the money to buy the bread. But at lunchtime, whoever was at home had more time to do some callaloo and some crab or some whatever meat or fish. And you had a better lunch. When, when when you go home. Okay, so was uh, was it very common to have fish? And what kind of fish would you uh, have in your meal? You would have flying fish, dolphin, whatever was available. Sometimes okay. fish would come up from other from the other villages. People would come up with trucks selling fish, okay. and you were able to get fish if you didn't get to have fish um, from Marigot. People would come up with trucks selling fish. If you had money, you would buy. And what role did you, how, how old were you when you started to help your parents in preparing meals? Well, all like seven, eight, you had to be helping. Yeah. What would you do? I don't know why, why does the volume went down so low? I can hear you fine. I have to put this to my ears to hear. Um, about eight. Okay. Yeah. And and the, the the provisions you talked about in your meal, what kind of provisions were they? Can you name them? You had dashing, you had bananas, you had yams, yellow yams, you had tanias. 
This was the main um, crop we grew in Mariga. Tanya, Dashin, and Yam. With planting and, and green bananas. Most of those you mentioned are starchy foods. Did you have any vegetables that went with your meal? The vegetables were mostly green vegetables. Um, because of the water situation in Marigat, in our village, and I'm talking about Marigat, we did not grow a lot of vegetables. Some people would grow cabbages, but there was no water. There was not a lot of running water in the village. We had to depend on rain, and we had to go into gutters and, and, and streams for water, even drinking water. So there was no um, carrots and what we, what we had. We had a lot of green leafy vegetables we would get from the, the, big, the bigger um gardening like the dashing the, the dashing leaves but to grow fancy carrots and cabbage and lettuce a couple a little lettuce but we didn't have a lot of vegetables in our diet i see let me ask you this just as a matter of hygiene did you have a local hospital in Marga? we did and uh, can you tell me who attended to the hospital in way of the nurses or the doctors we had we had doctor station. We had a doctor station at the hospital. Who we had a doctor station there, and we had nurses. So, um, any, I remember any, in the days, any doctors you can name. We had a doctor by the name of Doctor Robinson. He was not. I don't think he was a Dominican, but he was stationed there. Was he a white man or a black man? He was white. We had Dr. Armour, the old, the, the father of the young Armors. Then we had Dr. Green, who was from Dominica also, but he was a young doctor. We had Dr. Green, we had Dr. Armour, and Dr. Robinson. And the thing about these doctors, they stayed there a very long time. So, um, so you're saying they actually lived in America at the hospital? They lived in Margaret at the hospital. There was a, a quarters for them. The, the doctors had a residence there. I see. So this and is they, not something of having to go to Roseau to get medical treatment from a doctor. You had a doctor. We had start. a doctor on site, yeah. Yes. And, um, I think okay. they went to the other villages, like they went to the Carib Reserve. They traveled to the Carib Reserve. So they had days they would have their clinics there, but base was Marigot. Wesley because, came over to Marigot. Woodford Hill came to Marigot. So I think as far as Calibi, she came to Marigot. So you're saying that Marigot was a medical center? The Marigot was based, yes, that's where the center was. They would go up to Salibia. They would go up to Atkinson. The doctors would go there. They, would, they had days they would go there. Is there any um, way you can put the camera so I can see your face? Is that Because I cannot hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can, I can hear you a little, but I, I was saying... Okay. Saying, I can hear you fine. You're doing just fine. So you've mentioned Dr. Robinson, Dr. Amor, Dr. Green. Um, what about the nurses? Any nurses you can remember, their names? We had... Um, we had nurse... What was her name? She was Nurse Watley, then she became Nurse Africa. Then we had Nurse Massgrave. And again, the nurses were few because they had quarters and they lived there. They stayed for a long time. I mean, a nurse would be in Marigot for like five, six, seven, eight years, one nurse. So they so became they part of the village. Time. So nurse, nurse, nurse Africa and nurse was there. They were, they were there for a long time. I can't, who was before them? I can't remember who was before them. And, and can you tell me, uh, in those days, uh, Sister Marty, did uh, you have any diseases like yours and uh, jiggers in Marigat? We did. Um, some children had yours, and um, and they had jiggers. Your camera has gone out. Can I you put know. it back on? I don't know what is. I I always put my mic. It's coming now. Uh, 
Yeah. While you try to put it back on, you can uh, let's do this here. So, so you said that there was yours and jiggers. What if anything was done by the government to cure those two diseases? Well, I mean, there was a hospital, and then people with yours they would go to the hospital for dressing, dressings and injections. There were some that would have to go every day. The Jigger's children didn't wear, we didn't have shoes, so children were barefooted in the dirt and everything. So there let me stop you for a second. Let me stop you for a second. The yours was, was like a sore and also on your feet. Is that right? Or on your legs? Anywhere on your body, I think it was. It was on your legs. It was anywhere, all over your body. And they treated it with um, penicillin injections? They did, and you had to go to get it cleaned up at the hospital. Okay. And, um, there, there were injections for it. And then it died, it died out in the population. It died out over the years. It died out. But um, the jiggers, people used to take care of the jiggers. It, 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 is a, it was a recurring thing. No, the jiggers is a little different. The jiggers was like a mite that entered under your feet. Is that right? And to your skin. It would go anywhere that it can penetrate your skin, especially on your toes. And it, was, it wasn't something you could like get rid of. It wasn't like a cold because if you take out one today, you could get another one tomorrow. Because okay, how would they take, how would they how, remove it, uh, Cynthia? Can you tell us? Um, some people took it out with a pin if they can see it. I I remember some. It, it used to be. I remember once I could see children if 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 they were standing, you could see the nits coming out from their feet, from their toes. If we're oh, standing no. in line. They're, they're told because they are barefooted. It was like because a worm? Was it like a worm? It was nits. It was like eggs. Oh. Very fine eggs. Mm. So after it, it was, that was the adult stage when it had gone to the stage where it had got into your, into your toe, into your body, into your flesh. And it, it, it kind of formed a sort of bag inside, inside of your toe. And then after time it would burst and it, it, the oh. nits would come out. So it oh. it was very painful for some children. It was very painful. I didn't get it that kind. I remember getting a jigger in my foot because, but I didn't get that really severe kind. And 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 that had to do a lot with um sanitation also and walking barefooted. But it wasn't something you could really um control or blame anybody for. That was our condition. So you're saying that the conditions were impoverished in that children yes. did not have shoes, they and didn't. so. You had these jiggers, but once the advent of shoes became commonplace, once yes. shoes became commonplace, that died out. Yes, yes. When children could wear shoes to go to school, and there, there was there was a certain amount of education. Um, there was you were being told about it. even when you go to the hospital, you were educated as to how to take care of these things and mm -hmm. why they happen. Okay. Um, jiggers and worms and yours. There was education about them. People were, you were being educated about it. They were talking to you about it. You were told about it in school, how to take care of it. We did so get sister, education. Okay. So, Sister Cynthia, you said it was a combination of several factors. One was education, that there's public health education as to how to take care of that disease or that uh, parasite. Number two, you had medical care where you had uh, dressings being administered at the hospital and injections for yours. And you also said there was social change in that the social change led to the um, uh, common use of uh, shoes. And as the common use of shoes advanced, then there was a uh, lessening of the, of the frequency of that, dis of that disease called yours and of the parasite called jiggers. Is that right? Right. Okay. Let me ask you about politics in those days. When you were growing up in Margaret, there were no political parties as we have today. Of course. I don't remember what they were called. I think one was um you had political parties because I remember um Lionel was... Laville was on one party and then um this guy from Portsmouth, Douglas was on another party. I can't remember what they were called. Well, that. Douglas had the Workers and Peasants Party at one point, and um La Villa also had the DUPP, that's the Dominican United People's Party. Lionel La Villa. That's so they right. Were, they, were, they were opposition. One, they were, one was in opposition to the other. That's right. And then there was the Labour Party that came in. Do you After remember the Labour Party? 
Yeah. Do you remember the Labour Party? Who was with the Labour Party? I don't remember. Who was with the Labour Party? Miss, was, Miss there, uh, was it uh, Will Strathmore Stevens? Exactly. Yeah. Tell me about him. Tell me who he, who was Will Strathmore Stevens. Um, I didn't go. I <laughs> I knew the man. He was an old man already. I think there was a lot of talk about him. He was highly respected. He was a notorious teacher. His his pupils were extremely bright because he took he went to every extent to make sure that his children learn. So he was that kind of teacher. And you know, with us, you beat people into learning. And I think that is what he was. He would beat you into learning. So everybody learned who went to his school. If you didn't learn, you just didn't have to learn. He was a very natural. And then people respected him very much. Then after he retired from teaching, he went into politics. And I think he became, he, 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 won, the, he, he, he won the representative for Marigot because all Marigot people voted for him after Laville. Um, and he became an education minister at that time? I don't know. Yes, he became minister of education. I don't remember. Yeah, I think he became education minister of education. Okay. Well, let's get back to your school. Let's get back to your schooling and uh, let's get back to sort of family life. Can you give me the names of your brothers and sisters? How many were there and their names? Can I remember all these people? Well, with your mother at least, Miss Ivina Abel, little Alexander. So with my mother, it was only Jack, Jack Robinson and, and, and Mochi Robinson. And then after, um, long after, like 12, 12, 12 years later, she have, she had Vanya, Vanya Defoe, Francis, Alexander, Claudia Alexander, Bridget Alexander, Carleen Alexander. So after she got married to her husband, she had these Alexander children. So, so how many of you in total? Eight? Seven, I think. Seven. Okay. Seven. But I know your brother Jack Robinson became a famous firefighter in Dominica. Okay. All right. I, in fact, he worked with my father at the Melvin Wall Fire Station. You remember my father? I remember your father, but I remember Jack, if you call him a famous firefighter, I remember Jack was a famous um, Coca Cola truck driver. Oh, okay. I, I tell you, I, I look at Jack more famous in driving Coca Cola truck because the Mornings and the nights that he drove those big truck, those big trucks around those narrow roads, I respect him more for that than even being a firefighter. Well, let me ask you about this because it's very interesting for those of us persons who will listen to you that in our childhood, and I can remember that we had trucks from the Coca Cola company going around the island distributing soft drinks. Is that correct? Exactly. And Jack was one of the drivers. I never, that boy could drive a truck. And you're talking about they would distribute, I think in those days, Seven Up, correct? I don't remember Seven Up. I remember Fanta Coca Cola Juicy. Fa Fanta <laughs> Coca Cola Juicy. Right. So you're saying to me in Dominica, we in those days had a factories producing soft drinks. Is that correct? Yes. And before that, we had a we had a factory that used to just produce sweet drinks. We used to call it sweet drinks, just sweet drinks, um, cream soda and other drinks like that before Coca-Cola and these came on. So in Dominica, you're saying in those days in the 1940s and 50s, when you were a child, on Dominica, even before Coca-Cola, we, we had sweet drink factories, yes. juicing, club soda, pear yes. drops, yes. apple soda, and these things. Yes. Why do you believe today, if I were to tell you there were no Dominica factories producing soft drinks? What would you think of that? I don't know what to think about that. I think government and people are they are equally responsible for these things because I, I cannot understand that. That is something that is more than what I can understand. I, I don't understand. I don't know if it's laziness. I don't know if it's daft. I don't know. I it I am baffled by it. I'm I'm honestly baffled by it. Because some of the progress you knew no longer exists. Is that what From it is? Before I knew. I I I I don't know what to say. I'm baffled by it. I, I blame the people. I blame the government. I am baffled by it. Let me ask you this. In the evening time, 
you got home around what time from school? 3.30. And um, what would you have for dinner? Whatever was there. I don't know. Just give us an example of a typical dinner. The same thing for lunch was the same thing for dinner. Um, it was ground provision and fish. Sometimes did you, you have, have a, did you have a what did you what what did you cook on a gas stove or kerosene stove or wood wood uh, it stove? It was wood. It was wood fire. And uh, that was in the backyard. No, we had we had fireside made up in our kitchen. <laughs> Okay. I didn't think in the backyard. But what I was going to tell you is sometimes you have to wait until your father or the fish come in so that you can get fish for dinner. But we had fresh fish. So if you had lunch and then you didn't have any fish to cook for dinner and they wanted to cook in the same ground provision, um, perhaps your parents would wait until the boats come in so that I can get some fish to cook some food for the night. Sometimes it would be late. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it depends on when the fish come, but it was grog provision and fish for dinner most of the time. Yeah, let's talk about the amenities that you had in your house. Did you have electricity? No, so it was kerosene lamp. Kerosene lamp. And so when you did your homework, you did your homework with the kerosene lamp. Yes, sir. And uh, what books did you have in the house to read? Well, when you come from school in Marigot, you didn't have homework to do. Well, I had homework to do because as I guess exactly, Bully would give me homework to do. But every child didn't have homework to do. Some children had homework and some didn't, but I had homework to do. So I'd have to do it by kerosene lamp. And what books did you have to read? Um, there were more than primers. They were, they, they were, um, you ha I had my maths book and I had other English book. Okay. If you can move the camera back to your face, did you have a book called the West Indian Reader? Yes, we ha I had the West Indian Reader. But every child, these books had to remain at school. I see. You couldn't take every them home. Didn't have a book. If I had a book, because I would be, I had the privilege of getting a book from my uncle. I, see. I had to take care of it and take it back to school to him the next day. I see. But every child didn't have the privilege of taking home a book. You go to school and you read the book and you leave it at school. You didn't have books mm -hmm. to take home. Or let's talk. Okay. If you could afford to buy one, but you couldn't, you, you could hardly afford a Bible. In those days, were you saying that mm -hmm. wages were very poor? They were. I mean, not many people could afford to buy books. Most of the people were peasant farmers? Exactly. And how many shops did you have in the village? Quite a few. Let me see. Well, what shops we had there? Oh. I'll just, just, at, just at where's we had. Was there one called Willie Thomas? Not yet. Willie, Willie came in after. I was a woman already when Willie had his job, but I'm talking about Marshall, Miss Collar. My show was a Syrian, is that right? It was the Syrian who had the shop at Wears, and then you had Miss uh, Mabel Collar. She had a shop there. Who was Miss Mabel Collar? Was she a black woman? She was a light-skinned woman. If you remember... Um, um, she was like the Robinsons. The Robinsons, Robinsons were Irish, Scottish people mixed with black people. Is that right? Yeah, and then you had Mrs. Winston, Mr. Winston on the bay. And then you had Mr. George, George Marshall on the, on the, on the flat up here. And then you had Miss Color. Miss, Miss the Winstons were also people of uh, light complexion, European descent. Is that right? So Mr. Winston was dark. Mrs. Winston was light. I see. And the oh. Robinsons were also people of European extraction. They were people of light color mixed with Africans. Is right. That right, right, right. So um, let me ask you about uh, the sort of festivals that you would have in Margaret? Would you have like a maypole festival? They had maypole, maypole. I remember my grandmother, these people used to dance what they call the maypole. They had and maypole. the maypole is where they have the stick or a tower 
and the wrap a rope around it. around it and they do a dance around it. I never did it, but the, the older people did it. And they used to do a dance they call belly with a drum, like an African drum. And, and they used to dance around the drum, dance around the drummers. They did that. What about carnival? Did they have carnival in Marga? Yes, they had carnival. They had two days carnival like now. And what costumes would they have? I mean, it they did people did all sorts of costumes. People disguising um who could afford to buy bought things, but many people couldn't afford to buy. So people improvised with all sorts of clothes and they cut up clothes and they, they they make it how it people were very creative in doing carnival, I have to see. They try to make it as colorful as possible and 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 very creative, some of it. Yeah. What instruments did the bands have in uh, musical instruments? They had what they call the lapo cabwit, and they had the bamboo, the bloody bamboo, the lapo cabwit. And the, the lapo cabwit was a drum, eh? Yes, and the um and the shak shak and the the shak shak the bamboo and the drum. That's what they had. Uh, the shak shak was like a little calabash with drumby beads inside of it. You shook it. Right, they, they, and some of them they make it bigger, and they, and but they had the, the bamboo. The bamboo was one of the main things. The, the bloody bamboo, the shak shak, and the drum. That's That's what they no did. trumpets. Did they have brass horns and brass oh, trumpets no. and so on? <laughs> no, that was a long, long after. That was, that was all. I, I remember down in in fifty five, back in fifty five. Um, there was a headmaster. He was from, he was from Grand Bay. His name was remember, Cameron. He was Mr. He was a Richards, and he was a headmaster. And he loved music, and he the, he 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 had a band. They call it the Excelsior. And then they had instruments, and, and they had that for carnival. They call it Excelsior band, and they had brass. It was, but it wasn't until 1955 they were about that they had that band. I see. Let me ask you, in those days, did you go to church on Sunday? I did. Did you go regularly? I did. And where did you attend? Wesley. We had to walk what? from Wesley to Marigot. We had to go from Marigot to Wesley because I was Catholic at the time. And we see. didn't have a Catholic church in Marigot. Um, so we had to, um, there was a truck, there was a truck who used to take us, a big a big Ford truck. You get on that truck and you would pay three pence from Marigot to Wesley. Who didn't have money would have to walk. And the children had to pay a penny. And the adults paid three pence. So they would take you to church. And after service, they would bring you back. And what kind of clothing would you wear to go to church in those days? Whatever you had. And sometimes you didn't have shoes, but you had to go barefooted to church also. I see. And was the priest a black Dominican or a, a white European? No, he was a he was a FMI father. He was a French. He was a French something father. He, he they were mostly French priests. They were FMI fathers. Um, were they black French or white French? They, they were black. They were white. They were white French. Um, I I remember one. There was one that he was Father Vizano. Um, I don't know if you remember Father Villeneuve. We had a Father Villeneuve, Father Vizano. But there was a one they call Father Barrow. Father Barrow was there. And again, like the doctors, the priests, when they came, they stayed for decades, like 10, 15 years. So you didn't change them often. They became part of the community. They, they blend in. And it was just a life like they escape one life and they come and they just um, adapt to the life that they had there and they stayed for a very long time. I see. I see. Did you make your first communion in Wesley? I did. Were you confirmed in Wesley? I did. Okay. And when did you take the common entrance exam? I was 11 something, 11 plus. I Can did you tell thing. those who will be listening what the common entrance exam was? How am I going to remember that? Well, I, I know, let us back up a little. I did not do the common entrance, but 
I did an exam. How I got into high school, the Methodists conducted an exam, an entrance exam for the Wesley High School, for their school. Mm. That is how I got into high school. I see. So they came and they did that come and that, it, it, that was an entrance exam, but it wasn't a government entrance exam. I see. So they, they, they conducted that. Move, move the camera a little bit more to the, there you go. There you go. Yes. It was, it was legitimate and legal with the Ministry of Education. And uh, I I don't remember how it got scored, but I got I, I I got I passed for that, and I got into high school then. But is it true that in those days, and congratulations again on that success? But is it true that in those days, if you were to get into high school, you had to take a national common entrance exam in elementary school, and only if you passed, you were allowed to go to the high school in town? Is that correct? That was correct. But not but many children did that. Not many children passed that exam. Oh, yes. In those days, there were only four high schools in Dominica. That is the Convent High School, Catholic run for girls, the Wesley High School, run by the Methodist Church for girls, the Dominica Grammar School, run by the government for boys, and the St. Mary's Academy, run by the, by, by the Catholic Church for boys. Is that correct? That is correct. So that the people who took the common entrance exam those who were allowed to pass could not be that many because there would be no seats. Is not true? I tell you, it wasn't many because there were, it wasn't many that could get into these high schools. It was very few. Yeah. It was very me, few. Indeed. Let me ask you this. What was your sense of being British, being a British subject? Did you have exercise books with the King and Queen of England or the Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen of England? How did you feel about that? Well, you can only feel about what you knew. We didn't know anything else. I didn't know anything else more than the Queen on the on the exercise book. We didn't have anything else. That's all we had. And we celebrated did... the Queen's birthday. Yes, birthday. It was a holiday. Was holiday. And we had the Queen on our book. And where else was the Queen? The Queen was on everything. And we were British. And yeah. that is all we had. That is all we knew. And that is what we live with. Did you have you sing the song, Britannia, Britannia? Britannia we Rules did. the Waves? Yes, we did. Can you sing that song today? Come on, I cannot sing. Okay. Well, uh, when did they have you sing that song, Sister Carlton? When did we sing that? Rule Britannia, Britannia Rules the Waves. Britannia, Britannia Rules the Waves. Nation. Oh, I remember now. Um. On what we used to call Empire Day or the Queen's birthday, which was the twenty fourth of May, we used to sing that song. You're talking my memory now, and yeah, Sister and Carlton, you gave a very good rendition of that song a moment ago, all despite your comment that you could not sing. Please try it again. But I mean, yeah, we we, we did sing that. Um, rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britain never, never, never will be safe. And I can't remember all the words to say, a nation, no, 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 something like that. I think it is well, in the book. Well, did they ever say to you in the books that the people of African descent have been enslaved in the past? Did they ever teach that? No. Why do you think they didn't teach those things? Because I didn't want you to know. <laughs> well, I think you're very honest, Sister Carlton. Thank you for your very blunt honesty in that regard. Um, you've told us about education. You've told us about healthcare. Tell us about what you did for fun as a young person, a young girl in Margaret in those days. Okay, so that would be when after you finish high school and you go back to Margaret and thing. So we 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 formed. And I was very interested that you asked me that. We formed clubs. We formed literary clubs in Marigat. 
And in those clubs, we formed debating clubs and we would meet all the young people who wanted to join. We would join up at night, so the night, and we would have debates and we'd talk about everything, about politics and everything. And sometimes we'd have speakers come in, but we had a lot of fun and we'd have a lot of food. We'd have moonlight parties, uh, moonlight walks. We would go on the... Um, like, no, I don't think people would be afraid to go out because they're afraid somebody will kidnap them or so. We used to go on the beach at night and have um, eats and drink something. So that is why we did that for a lot of that for fun. We formed clubs and, and, and things. At, at, and there were dances. We had dances that we used to go to. Some of us couldn't dance, but we'd stay around and chat and talk and eat. Where were the dances held, Sister Carlton? So um, we had two spots we used to have dances. One used to be at Winston's Hall on the bay. And then after when Winston Hall was getting too small, they had a hall at the back at um, the old police station. When they moved from where it was right at, at, at the point over there. I don't know if you know Margaret. I, I know Margaret. I know Sam's got her wares and... Okay, so back back of the Robinsons, back of the Robinsons, going going to Menvin Hall to the airport. Yeah, that is where the old police station was. Mm -hmm. Not as not as far as the airport, but midway between the Robinsons and the airport was the old police station. And uh, you had we had they had a big hall there, so you used to have dances there. And now, uh, which which bands would come? Would Swinging Stars come from Rosa, or you had your local band? There's a band. A band used to come from Portsmouth. What was the name of that band? We used to bring a band from Portsmouth. Uh, we didn't swing in stars, we didn't come to Margot much, but there was a band. What's the name of that band? The band used to come from Portsmouth. We used to get bands from the north. And, and they and were what, less expensive to get them from the north. Yeah. And what kind of instruments did they have? They had a, they had a band they called Black Affairs in Margot. Margot had a band, Black Affairs. Mm -hmm. And there was a band from Portsmouth, a very good band. It used to come to play also. They had instruments, they had good instruments, drums and trumpets and all sorts of things. They had good instruments. Guitars and pianos and so on. Organs. They had they had they had organs, not pianos. They had organs and guitars and trumpets. Very good. Let me ask you this now. We're coming. What about river bathing and sea bathing? Would you bathe in the sea often or not? Of course we did. Um I live near to the sea in a way. Because where I live, I could just go down a hill and go down in the sea. And we used to go and bathe in the sea often as children, especially during the holidays. We used to go down there and bathe in the mornings and come back and go to school. In I the see. Sea. And what we used to do also, um, we would go down there, pick up a basket of almonds and bring home. And somebody at home would cut those almonds while we're going to school and make them into tablets. So then when you come in the afternoon, you can go sell those tablets. So we would ah, pick them up. So you're enterprising. You actually made treats. So we'd go and we'd bathe in the sea, pick up those almonds, come up and go to school. So we bathe in the sea often. And in Dominica, these almonds grew on the side of the sea, seaside. Yeah. yeah. There were also something called seaside grapes as well. Yeah. Yes. Tell us, as you've mentioned, treats. What kind of treats would be made in the village by locals to be sold at school or on the side of the road? Can you tell us? Well, ginger cake, um, peppermints, coconut tablets, um, and then later, later when people, there, there was a lady who would make um, saltfish cake and Johnny cakes and, and saltfish cake. Bakes and 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 bakes and saltfish cake. That would saltfish make cake is really what you call acra. Acra, and um, that's a cake. fried. That's a fried mixture of codfish fried, and right. flour. So, but they wouldn't make it on the side. They would make it and bring it and sell it on the side of the road, even around yeah. the school. But the, the little sweet treats we had, it would be more like tablets and ginger cake and peppermints and things like that. They used to do. In, in Marga, they would do that. And what about would do, titiri? Would they make titiri acra as well? That was very seasonal. That was seasonal because you could only get that, but you would have saltfish all year round. 
But Tittery, you could only get Tittery August, September. When when it's seasoning, you know, Tittery is very seasonal in Dominica. And for those who will be listening to this, the Tittery is a very fine fish that you catch at the mouth of the river. Right. It's a very tiny fish. Let me ask you this. Um, with regard to river bathing, did you have much river bathing in Marga? You sure? Because that is what you had to bathe. Before you go to school, you had to go down in the river or the sea and bathe. So because we, you, had, you had no indoor plumbing. No. So we, where I live, we had a river just be, below us. You cross the road and you go down to the river. So you had to go to the river in the morning, either to get water and bathe or bathe in the river and come back with water to do something else. So we, we, we do a lot of river bathing and sea bathing. Sea was on one side of me and the river was on the other side. But a lot of children, even in every area in Marigot, there's a river. Because take, for instance, Marigot, um, Overgutter, Monkey Hill have a river. Where's Flat? Have a river. Sam's gutter didn't so much have river. But if you go down to Marigot side down there, say back of um the Robinsons over there at the back there, a dam, you have a river. So all around us there were rivers in the vicinity where you could either go get water and bathe or bathe in the river. Let me ask you this. Did you have a refri you did have a refrigerator a refrigerator yeah, at home, did you? We didn't. We roasted our fish or we salted it. We didn't have any refrigerator. So was there anyone in Marigat selling ice? Sure. There was, there was yeah, after 10 years, they had people selling ice. Who was selling ice? I think Marshall had a fridge selling ice. I don't know how he got it. It's only Mr. Marshall who had a fridge selling frozen joys or something like that. When was the it first time you had a frozen joy, which is like a little cube of uh, juice frozen? Cube of juice. Um, Marshall had Mr. Marshall had somebody a, a part where somebody was making frozen joy inside of his place, but where we rarely got frozen joy was when we go to Rosa. I see. When I we see. go to Rosa, we didn't have a lot of fridges in Marga. When you were a child, the I'm fridges sorry. were kerosene. They used kerosene on the fridges. They were kerosene fridges. Amazing. So the like fridges were powered. The fridges were powered by a kerosene fire. At the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Using fire to provide electricity yeah, for was, refrigeration. So you would hear Amazing. people have kerosene fridge. And I think that is what Marshall had. Yeah. Not until we went to Rozo that people had electric fridge. Yes. But indeed. in Margaret, I think if anybody had a fridge in Margaret, it was kerosene. Yeah, let me ask a question. When was the first time you saw a movie? When I went to Rozo. No movies were shown in Marigat? Movies were shown in Marigat, yes. But they were Where not were they At the same, there was a place where there's the Catholic Church now. Where the, the church, Catholic Church is in Marigat now. That was a movie the theater belonging to, I think, Frobel Laville. That was a cinema. So Frobel Laville had a cinema in Marigot. Yeah, I, that is what I think it was. Did you ever go there? I did. They had matching okay. there. I remember that's the first place I saw Tarzan. You saw Tarzan in Marigot? <laughs> Tarzan in Marigot. What yeah, did you they, think of him? I, I forget about him right now. So, yeah, there was a, a, a Frobel Laville had a theater there. Now, once let's talk about getting to Rozo. Once you got to Rozo, was that the, when you went to the Wesley High School? Was that the first time you were visiting Rozo, or had you been there before? Oh, I'd been to Rozo before with my grandmother twice. I think I'd gone to Rozo twice or three times before I went to, into school. How did you travel to Rozo? By truck. You went by a truck. So the Transcensular Road was already built? It was. I think that is the first year it went straight into Roseau, 1957. I think it as if 1957 was the first year because in 1956, <clears throat> excuse me, you had to you had to stop 
you have to stop at Debosh, get a truck from Margot, go to Debosh, stop at Debosh, walk across, and then another truck would come from Rosu and pick you up and take you to Rosu. And you do the same thing when you're coming back. Up to 1956. The first time it went straight through is 1957. Amazing. Amazing. And those trucks were the uh, British Bedford trucks with the wooden box? Five-ton bed, five Bedford trucks. Indeed. And who owned the Bedford trucks that you used in America? Do you know? Stanley Musgrave. One was Stanley Musgrave. Um, there was um, Maurice Stellimac and Stanley Musgrave. These two men had trucks. Only was two. Sta was Stanley Musgrave of uh, European descent? He was. He was. Um, yeah. He was. They were. They were light skinned people. Yeah. What about Telemark? Telemark was a dark man. I I don't know where he originated from, but I think he he had relatives at Wesley. Okay. Let me ask you this question. So when you got to Rosa, where did you stay? I stayed with my father. My father was living in Rosa at the time. I see. And what did you think about Rosa? Can you describe Rosa in, in the 1950s? Rosa was a nice place to live. Um, everything, it was congested. It was clean. Things were fairly inexpensive. It was a very fun place. It was a very interesting place. What did you find fun of Rosa or fun about Rosa? That you're away from the country. You're in the town now. <laughs> you're, going to, <laughs> you're going to school. You're going to school. So, did, did you go to the Botanic Gardens? You did. Tell I us did. about the gardens in those days, what it was like. It was it was a quiet place to be. You you find people walking through the gardens all the time. You walk and you see all the flowers. There was something we used to pick up there and eat. It was a thing we used to call velvet tambourine, a little black thing. When you suck it, it used to be sweet. We used to pass and pick that up. But you see, people used to do that. Now if somebody wouldn't pick up a velvet tambourine on the ground and put it in their mouth because they were afraid they would get sick. We'd pick up a velvet tambourine on the ground and, and give it to you. Know, look, everybody's using velvet tambourine. We used to go to, it was a hideaway for us anyway. If you, you, yeah. I wouldn't tell you that, and you didn't hear me say so, right? We I, away I from, when we leave school, right, when we want to go home, we used to go to the botanical garden. We want to go and home. It was, and it was very pretty, lots of flowers and nice trees. Yeah, it was a good hideaway. It was a good hideaway. You, um, you don't want to go back to the congestion of the home or the bother from the home. It was a, it was a very relaxing place to go. I, 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 I'm serious about that. You used to go and sit there and spend a lot of hours there with your friends. You did you also go to the public library? <clears throat> we did. Where was the public library? And we went to the Windsor Park was another nice place to go. Yes, yes. And did you go to the cinema? We did. Especially when they were uh, when they were playing um, they were playing over the the movies. You, you, well, and in June, in June they were playing over all the movies they play for the year. So you'd go and see those movies, and then you would go to Pitt. There's right? a name. There's a name they had for it. You know, um, there's a name An they had for that. Something, something anniversary. Something. Anniversary. 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 So, we, so we used to go to the anniversary, and I mean. We used to go, and we used to go to Pitt because Pitt was what sixpence. I can't remember. Yes, that's Pitt where the um, working class would go. You know, the I mean, Carib cinema was divided in four parts, right? It was Pitt, House, Balcony, and Box. You remember that? I know that, but it wasn't so much working class. It was fun to go to Pitt because you used to fight to go into Pitt. Your clothes. Describe that. Dirty. Describe that for people who would not know how <laughs> that would be. It was fun because if you get there, you, you line up to go to Pitt because you want is the anniversary and it's half price or, or, or free or something. I can't remember what it was. Half, half price, half price. Yeah, half price. So you line up early to get to Pitt. You have your nice little blouse over your skirt and sleeveless and everything. Well, iron and thing, you're nice and you go in the afternoon. And boy, when you leave there- if you, you if you can fix your camera a little bit so I can see your face. When Go you ahead, leave, tell us about it. 
when you leave there, you stink and dirty because people riding all over your back. And it's fun. You're fighting to go into a pit. It's fun to get there. When you get there, you're exhausted to get into pit to city. Thing, right? But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yes, indeed. And now, I, I what, what, I'm sorry. What year did you start? Uh, what year did you start at the Wesley High School? It was fifty-seven. And what year did you uh, graduate from the Wesley High School? Um, sixty-two, sixty-three. Okay. Were you in town when the Carnival Fire took place? I was. Tell me about that. Um and. Was that in 50, 50, 60, 63? February 63. I, so I left school in 62. And 63, that I was working at the Herald newspaper. And I had gone to Margot for carnival and came back the night, the, the Monday night, was it some Tuesday night? when we heard of the fire and I, I had to go straight to work because all the cards, the sympathy cards, we had to be making sympathy cards for that um, thing. You know how many days we make more than, it's about three weeks we were just making sympathy cards for that fire. And the uh, three people who died ultimately were uh, Eddie Martin, I knew this Eric guy. Schlingford and I George knew. James. I knew these guys. George mm. James, I don't remember his girlfriend name, but I used to work, I think, at George, Astor Family. Uh, uh, her name was Liz Green. Yes, I used to work at Astor, for her, at Astor Fan, and I knew her very well. And Eddie used to be just, he used just at the back of Wesley High School. Eddie Martin, he was just at yes. the back of Wesley High School. And of course, we know the Schillingford guy. Liz Green was my good friend. I knew her through Jeff Charles. You remember Jeff Charles, who the announcer he used to be on radio. Yes, they were very good friends, and I knew her through to Jeff Charles. And it was a very very hard time for all of us with these guys. They are very prominent guys, and of yes. course, <laughs> the guy who did it, nothing happened to him. So yes, indeed. Um, did you see any of the funerals of the uh, persons who died in the fire? I did. I was in Rosewall yeah. on the police funerals. I didn't go to them, but I saw them. I saw all the yeah. processions. Yeah. Were they huge processions? They were huge processions. They were huge processions. I mean, it was a very, very solemn time. For weeks in Rosewall, it was solemn. Very, very solemn. What did people think about what happened? And so much so after that carnival for a long time, carnival wasn't the same. Because what I thought is that they, they, I think everybody knew who did it. What was his name again? Fletcher, some kind of something. What was his name? I don't remember his name. We're calling it, we're not calling his name. I don't remember his name. Yes, I can well, see I cannot remember him now. Mm -hmm. But um the carnival wasn't the same for a long time. But people, everybody suspected who did it, they knew who did it and everything. And 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 there was well, another. There was a, a lot. Other people got burned from from it, and there was a. But nineteen people got burned actually. Nineteen people mm -hmm. were burned, yeah. some severely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so you're working at the Herald. How did you get that job? Looking for a job. So I wasn't far from the Herald. I was looking for a job and I, I was just walking and looking for a job. It's different. You go in and you check all about, you know, that people looking for somebody. I cannot remember if they had ever noticed that they wanted somebody, but I started there collecting money for Mr. Johnny, who was the proprietor at the time. He, the proprietor, he owned the Herald. Where was he from, Mr. Johnny? I don't know. He wasn't but a he, Dominican? Yes. He was an old man, and he was blind, and he had a herald. And, of course, people used to 
they distributed the Herald, but the people didn't pay for the subscription. Mm -hmm. So he hired me to collect the subscription money and he paid me a percentage of what I collected. It was mm. good business. Was because it good business? It was good business for me because I would go to these offices and it wasn't just, it was offices. So, you know, you, you would distribute the Herald to, let us suppose, the Green Dispensary. So I would go there and announce myself that I come to collect this money for the Herald. For the, and they would, they would pay me. And so if I collect a thousand dollars, a hundred was mine. That is okay. how we did. So and I, I rarely went over it. I got I, I made a lot of money doing that. And after okay. I started Was that your first it, job? Was that your first paying job? Oh man, I think I think I'd done something at Astafans before. Okay. What did you do at Astafans? I was a clerk in the I was a clerk in the wholesale department. I think Mama okay. got me that job because she knew Mr. Astafans. And Mr. Astafan, when she did, she introduced me to Mr. Astafan here, and he hired me. So I mean, Mama Robinson, right? My grandmother, because That's she used to right. she used to do business with Astafans. I see. So I, I think is was Mama Robinson a Carib? No, she was a black woman from La Plaine. Okay, but she was a part Carib. Was that correct? No, she was from La Plaine. She was no Carib. She was dark. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, what was the relationship like between people in Margaret and people in the Carib territory? <laughs> it's true. Um, the the Caribs didn't like the black people. They used to call them Sakwe Neg. They used to call them Negroes, Neg. You're Negro. Mm. And they yes. didn't want to, they didn't want to have much to do with them. And I think I um I think we the, the Margaret people, we kind of take in position on them sometimes. They would come down, they would sell their, their, their goods, they would drink all their money in alcohol before they get back to the Carib Reserve. Sometimes they'd be on the side of the road drunk and things like that. But they were very hardworking people. But there was not a very close relationship between um, um, Margaret people and the Caribs. After a time, um, they started working for us, like in gardens and so. Margaret people would think that they would feel sorry for them and want to take their children to give them a better life, but the children didn't stay. They didn't want to stay with us. So there, there was not a healthy, nice, healthy relationship with them. There was not a good understanding between Margaret people and Caribs. Then, now I think mm -hmm. it's much better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Caribs didn't want their children to make... um. Like their daughters, they didn't want their daughters to go with our men, to have children with our men, because they think we were Negroes. Sakwe Neg, they used to go. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, uh, was it true also, though, that uh, the people who were from Margaret maybe called them names as well? Well, they, yes, they did. Well, I'm saying it, it, there was not this close relationship between us. And What, I, would, I think what we, would they call them? What would they call them? They At one time, I think there was one slang that... Um, the Caribs, they used to call them bisos. And yes. that came because a Carib, they say, I don't know, they were, they were driving and instead of saying, give it gas, he said, buy sauce, give it sauce. So they used I to see. call them buy sauce. I think that's how they come to call them buy sauce. I uh, see. It's interesting you said that because when I was at the grammar school in first form, there were one or two Caribs in my class or incoming class. And I think that's the same name they would use, buy sauce, yes. They call them bisos. So it's yeah. like they instead of say, we would say, give it gas, man, give it gas. They say buy sauce, give it sauce. Yes, it mm -hmm. And I mean, when you look at the two things, it's the same thing. Gas yes, and sauce is the same thing. So they used to call them buy sauce. But uh, yes, yes. But it's a good thing that those relationships have now improved over years. Yes, they have. And the Caribs who used they used to come down and my grandmother who is my mother mother, she would take these people because they had, they would come from the Carib Reserve to sell their bananas and they would have to come by sea. And they would be battered and weary and worn. And I remember my grandmother taking several of them in her house because sometimes they lose most of their bananas. And the little wow. they sell, 
And my, my grandma would take them out. I used to see her coming with them and she would give them food and give them sleep. And the next day they would be able to go back to their country, buy, buy, their, buy their groceries and go back. Um, I could well, they had, they traveled on canoe, a canoe. Right, to bring down the bananas to sell because they didn't have a point up there to sell them. I can remember seeing them coming down in hammocks with their sick. They would ha make a hammock. If you know what a hammock is, you know what a hammock yes. is. They That's where you take a stick and you sling around the stick see, like a sheet, a sheet or something. Yeah. And you tie it and four men would be bringing down a sick person on their shoulder. And so they're walking for days to get down to a doctor. And that is when they, they started sending the doctors up there. So they had a hard time. They had a they had a very hard time, but um, time time has changed for them, and I'm very very happy to see what the Caribs did with their lives. I'm very very proud of them. I'm happy to see what they did for themselves. If Amen. I dare, I, if I dare say they do better for themselves than what we do for ourselves in in our very village. Yeah. Let me ask you about Philly Shandolfrey. I have two books here. It falls into place by Philly Shandolfrey. And uh, she was a Dominican author. She was a white Dominican, the Orchid House. It's a picture of her right here. When did you meet Miss Alfrey and how did you meet her? I met Miss Alfrey at the Herald. After the, um, after the fall of the Federation, when she came back to Dominica from Trinidad, after this federation dissolved, yes. or when she lost her seat in the federation, she came back and she was living at um, Santa Roma in a family house uh, with an aunt of hers. She came, she came into the, she, she started at the Herald. She found the Herald and she wanted a place to, to publish. She wanted a place to, to voice. She wanted somewhere so that she could put out her message. And that is when she came with Mr. Man. She, of course, he was the, the sole proprietor. And of course, he, he did it his own way. And then she, she tried to encourage him to do it another way. And that is how she, she got me into the times, the typesetting. And, the, and I used to go to collect. And this is a picture of her right there, a young Felicia and Alfred. And she had a daughter. She was, of course, a little older when you met her. Yeah. And she had she a daughter. A... The name of, um, she had a daughter. Her daughter died in Kenya by an accident. Oh, boy. And she had given me a scarf from Kenya that her daughter had given her. We were very, very close. I live, in the, I live at Santa Roma with her. Was while. she a friendly person? Can you describe her? Very, very nice and friendly. Very friendly. Very human. Um treat people very well, very courteous. Um, she don't look down on anybody. She didn't, she didn't have any her. prejudice in her. She was not prejudiced. Um, she was married to a, to a friend, a British guy. He, um, Robert? Robert Alfrey. Very nice man also. Very quiet. By that time, was she still in the Labour Party that she had founded? No, she was not. I think they'd kick her out. And she she didn't have any she didn't have any much resources then. She didn't have money then. She was she she was becoming poor. She had become poor. So You're saying she'd become poor? She didn't have money. She didn't have a lot of money then. So yes. um, Did you share so yours with her? The what? Did you share your money with her? I didn't have any money, but she wasn't. She wasn't very. Deep. She wasn't rich. She she was now. She now came to to. She was working to to collect herself back in the Herald. Yes, and was the Herald a popular newspaper? It was popular. It was. Was she a good writer? She was. Uh, she had. She had to change. She wanted to change some things in the Herald. I mean, bring it more modern and up to date. Because remember, it was just this one one man one man thing that was working. And so did you all have a typesetting room where you had a big printer? Oh, we had a typesetting and a and a printer, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did you learn to typeset yourself? 
I used to typeset. I used to. I did typeset. So you did not just collect money for the Herald. You also produced the Herald. Oh, no, I, I, I used to. I, I started. That's how I started with collecting the money for Mr. Johnny. And after when Mrs. Alfred came and and they, they needed people to work, I, I, I worked there doing typesetting. When they, I, one, one Saturday morning, we were going to press Friday night and the whole, the whole front page broke. Oh, I boy. had to, I had to sit down there all night and, and set back all the type with the, the, the main printer man and proofread it and everything to get the print ready for five o'clock Saturday morning. Mm. And uh, by the time we unfold the papers, because they're going to come for them, as soon as we finished the last paper, we had a knock on the door. It was five o'clock. The bell was ringing at the church. So, How did the front page break? Was it because it was set and then it fell apart? Um, you know how these things were. It wasn't, it was, <laughs> it wasn't the, it wasn't a perfect thing. It was good, but it wasn't perfect. I don't know how, when he was going, it's something you have to be very careful how you hold it. Somebody hand shake, somebody hand slip, and all the types break. <laughs> yes, yes. So, because the types were like the little letters and stuff. Yes, but you, you have them, you have them in, 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 in they, they're all stacked. And they tie together, and you have to you bind them together. But if something shakes, they can break. I see, I see. So, so were they all letters, or some of them were words, and you just put them in place? Oh, they were all letters. They were all letters, one by one. Trust me, letters one by one. That is what they were. So you would type out the article, and then you take the letters to place in the spaces to make the words. Yes. That was very <laughs> tedious work. It was you have the you have the you have the you have the paper in front of you telling you what to write, and you have the type setting you set in the types to to type the words, and you have to proof it to make sure that there are no mistakes in it. So you proof it and you take out the mistakes and you proof it again and you have the perfect thing and now you set it up ready to type, and you set it over there and the the printer the head printer is going to take it and put it in the place where it has to go headline, front page, wherever it have to go. So they're all set over there and they, you have all the headlines there and you go, you pick them up and you put them to, 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 to form the page. Amazing. How many people were doing that in the room with you? Yeah, one, two, three, four of us. And uh, male, female, or just you're the only female? One male, three females, and the, 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 the head printer was a male. So what was his name, if you remember? He was, I don't remember his first name, but he was a Duran from, um, um, tra what, Trafalgar something? Um, mm -hmm. From Trafalgar up there. I got, Did I you get a, okay. Did you get a sense that Miss Alfie was a socialist? <laughs> I think she was. And uh, was that from the way she wrote or the things she said or her desire to help poor people become uh, comfortable in having better opportunities in life? The people she helped and the way and her concern for people. Um, she was also well, um, 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 well connected with the Caribs. She had adopted two Carib children. I am seeing one and one boy now, and she was very close to some Carib families. She had Carib families. I remember as a child driving a little jeep, and she always had two Caribs with her, a boy and a girl. A boy and a girl. One, the girl name was Sonia. I don't remember the boy's name. And I remember the girl was Sonia. She was a little older, and and the, and the boy, and she was a sickly girl. I think that's why Miss Aldrey was helping her. She wasn't. She wasn't very strong. But after she feed her up and thing, and she got a little strong. She was a very nice child, and the boy was a younger boy. Let me ask you: Were you with Miss Alfrey when she moved from the Herald and founded her own newspaper, The Star, which was a paper with a red star in the center at the top? We were still talking to her, but I wasn't working with her then. We why did she leave the? Why did she leave the Herald? I think. The, 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 the proprietor was resistant to change. And I think she wanted, I mean, she knew what she wanted. 
You're coming back here. Okay. We'll be we'll be done shortly. We'll be done shortly. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Um, when you left the Herald, is that when you went into teaching? No, I thought before I went to the Herald. When I left the Herald, I went into um, through Mrs. Alfrey. I got into um, Can Save. Oh, that's Canadian Save the Children Fund. This is when I left her. She is she's the one who introduced me to go to the. She recommended me to go to to Canadian Save the Children Fund. She sent me overseas to this to this course that I went to. She's the I one see. who helped me to get into that course. Outstanding. So where yeah. did you go? Canada? No, I went to St. Vincent. That was the first, that was the first, I was the first group of of um trainees, students for that type of development in the Caribbean. Um, and she's the one who got me there. I St. Vincent had a new um early development child development center. I and see. That is where I did a, a, a year's course. I and see. then I came back and started doing um, opening child care and, and the food centers for Canadian Save the Children Fund. I see. Um, before you go into that in any detail, can you tell me if you had any O-levels from Cambridge University while at high school? Not in, not in high school. I did it after I left high school. I, what did I, you I did... take? What subjects? I take English and English literature. Outstanding. Did you ever attend the Christian musical class? And did you know of it? No, I knew about it, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm not musically inclined and I couldn't sing. Did you know L.M. Christian? No, I. but I knew I, the, the other Christians I knew. Ellen, no. Which one? Did you know H.L. Christian? Well, you're giving me... Um, you're giving me... Um, initials. But if you ask me if I know the Mr. Christian who who was teaching music, I knew him because yes. I went to school with his children. Yes. I don't know what you mean. You're said. talking about uh, you went to school with uh, Birdie and Palestrina and Peggy and Peganini. Yes, I went to school with Peggy and Palestrina. Tell me about them because you know they left Dominica by the time I was of age. They were, they were funny girls, especially Peggy. <laughs> they, 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 both of them played music at school. They played yes. the piano at school. But um, I, I was in class with Peggy. Palestrina was younger. I see. Uh, Peggy was my age group. Palace was below us. Uh, we I used to call it Palace. And um, the boys went to the grammar school. Yes, and, uh, yes. Did, did, you visit, did you visit them at home? No, we didn't. But their mother was a carib, right? Full carib, yes. Their mother was a it's, carib. So we were the only of them. I, I can't remember going to their home. Yeah, so their father, my uncle, Lemuel McPherson Christian, was black and their mother was a full carib. Cecilia. He was very strict, Willis. man. Very strict on them. Very strict, man. Yes. Very yes. strict, man. If you can remove the camera a little bit so I can get your face, uh, Andy Cecilia. <laughs> Uh, what about education ministers Hen Henkel Christian? Did you work with them? Oh yes, I knew Mr. Christian. I knew him. Yeah. He was a very nice man. Yeah. So you you think you're telling me about HL Christian, but I knew these people. I just knew them as Mr. Christian. I didn't even know the first name. I see. So I just knew them as Christian. So I knew who the edu uh, Ministry of Education was, and I knew who the musician was, but I didn't know. I don't know if it's. I see. Let me ask you about Can Save. How long did you work with Can Save? A couple of years. I must have worked with Can Save about seven years. Okay. And then tell me when you got married and the children that you had. Oh boy. I got married in 1967. I have four girls. Unfortunately, I had two children in one year. Give me the names of the children. <laughs> Phyllis Carlton, Val Carlton, Thora Carlton, and Kareen Carlton. Phyllis Carlton, Val Carlton, Thora Carlton, and Venice Carlton. 
Kareen Calder. Kareen, Kareen. So you named Phyllis after Phyllis Jan Alfrey, the first. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. So Miss Alfie must have had much of an impact on you for you to name your first daughter after her. Very much, very much. Very nice. And uh, your children are all very well educated. I know that Phyllis and Val and Thora and Karina are delightful, highly educated ladies. And they're very proud of them. We're all very proud of them. Any boys? No boys and no yes. son in laws either. Well, you know. <laughs> what does your husband? Grandsons, though. Yes, indeed. What is your husband's name? Jeffers Carlton. Outstanding. Was he a firefighter? Thank you. I think he was briefly before we got married. Okay. And so when did you migrate to the United States? 1992. Outstanding. And when you left Dominica, you left Dominica from Kansas? I left Dominica. Yes, I left Dominica um, after the hurricane, after Hurricane Davis. Davis. That is in, in 79. In 79, and I went to Barbados. And that's where I educated the children. And then I left, um, I left Barbados in 1992 and came to America. So you stayed in Barbados for at least, you know, uh, 12, 13 good, years. 12, 12, 13 years. What was that like in Barbados? Uh, it was, it was a challenge because I had, that is where I had to educate my children. You're in a strange land with growing children, but it was very nice. The church was very helpful when I said the church. The, the church community, the church community reached out to me a lot and they, they became a, a force to help me raise my children and everything. They, they were there. They were and like, you're talking I'm, about the Methodist church? No, it was a, it was a Pentecostal church. They, they became like family, aunts and uncles to my children, which was very nice. I see. I see. Okay. Well... In the United States, uh, did you go to school or did you just work? No, I did. Um, I, when I came here, um, didn't know which way I was going, coming or going. Um, I, I work and then I went to school. Why did you study? <laughs> I did, um, I studied psychology. Outstanding. And I did. Um, was that at Montgomery County College? I did it at Howard University. Outstanding, outstanding. I did um, behavioral and social science. Outstanding. Well, we're very proud of you. You've always been a highly educated, highly motivating I don't know uh, that. person and always very well spoken, very respectful. I think you've represented the Robinson family very well here in the United States. I, try. I think you've represented uh, Margaret very well here in the United States. And uh, with your siblings, Billy and Ralph and Rita and Joan and Anna and Bembo and the others you've done, uh, Shiva, you've done very well. And we've always been happy to have uh, Phyllis and Val and Thora and Kareen in communion, in communion and community. Any final words for your children, your grandchildren, and our Dominican people at home and abroad that would be inspiring? For you, for you, Mr. Christian, I always think very highly of you. I'm very proud of you. I remember, and I, all, I always tell them some of the things you say the way the way you got through in America, the things you had to do, and it didn't stop you from doing what you had to do. You, you also has been an inspiration for me. You have been an inspiration for me. I remember some of the things you told me, and I have it at the back of my head. For my children, I want them to continue to be respectful, to be kind, 
and to be always in community because that is what you portray. Sometimes if you have to follow, if you, Christian, have to allow what you get to deter you from community, you would never do anything. And I talk about you. And that is that we, we need to take that example. We cannot let our nose and our hindrances deter us from community spirit. And 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 that is part of you. So thank you um, for what you do, all you do. I hope your children, your children would see it and they would benefit from it someday. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I feel quite humbled, you know, and um, uh, let me ask you a question. What role has faith played in your success? Prayer, faith. <laughs> very, very, very much. You know, you know, you, you say you give up and you let go because you cannot do it. Faith. Faith is what has carried me through. You give up and you let go. Um, and again, you cannot allow the things that crossed your path to make you better or prevent you from doing things. Indeed. So you have to, um, you have to continue doing, and that is what faith do with me. That's what faith is. That's it. Thank you so very much, and um, I just want to ask God to bless you, uh, fearless, thou. Thora, Corrine, and the grandchildren with Amen. much good health, happiness, and, and uh, prosperity. You know, uh, I think this um, has been very, very valuable to give uh, someone who was not born in the 40s, 50s, or 60s uh, some insight into the uh, culture of Dominica, the life that you led, you led and the, the different things you did. I mean, I, I just never knew you had been in the publishing business. You know, uh, <laughs> that you would actually, this but is so fantastic to learn. It is so interesting because I, I keep on telling my children and a lot of the girls I went to school with, a lot of them have died. They're not there anymore. A lot of my schoolmates, they have died. I, I can only think about two, I three, and one is kind of demented. So I am so blessed. I am so thankful. I spoke with somebody yesterday, uh, two days ago, and I say, in about two months, I'll be 80 years. And he said, you're driving and you're going to work. I say, yeah, I'm at work right now. So I'm very, very, very thankful. When did you get your license, by the way? When did, when did you first learn to drive? Tell me that. So I learned to drive in Barbados. I How old were you at that time? You are about 20? No, man. I was about 40. Yeah. And one day, when I came from driving, I threw myself on the ground and I started crying because I wasn't getting it. And there was a guy from the church who was teaching me and he actually hit my hand because I wasn't getting it. And then I stopped with him and I went with another guy. He was a policeman. He was big and tough, but he was gentle. And then I got my license. Outstanding. And today you're driving up and down the United States highways and roads. I, I am very, very thankful. And yes, you see what faith? Every day I am thankful. I am thankful. Give so, thanks. Give yes. thanks. Give thanks. Well, 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 thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Christian. Thank Sister, you. Sister Cynthia, we love you very much. And I, as I said to you earlier, if I had the means, I would uh, start a campaign to send you up for Miss Dominica, USA. Thank you. But, Look, I tell you. <laughs> Christian, so when I say you, you you don't let things deter you, and was it feeling well? I said, look, Christian has been asking me for this thing. I don't want him to think that I'm just pushing him away and, and all his efforts is in vain. I didn't want to do that. But I felt horrible yesterday. I sprayed my nose last night. I was horrible. But And usually when I get a call, I lose my voice. Yes. Usually I lose my voice. Well, the Lamb of God and the blood of Jesus came on you and healed you because I could not tell that you had a cold. You you look beautiful. You sound great. Well, and, I didn't, uh, I didn't want you to move the clothes again because I didn't want you to think, oh, I, she don't care about anything that I'm doing and I'm just wasting my time. And I know how hard it is when you have it. So I thank you very much.
Thank well, thank you. you very much. You can just put the camera back on your face right there for a little bit. And I just want to express my gratitude to you because this was uh, very good. I mean, you gave us the names of Drs. Green, Dr. Amor, Dr. Um, Robinson. You told us about the Caribs. You told us about Margaret, that you didn't have cloth for your layette. They had to use a um, flower bag. And my mother told us about that because she, she went for the war. She's older than you. She's 94. Unfortunately, she's lost a lot of her faculties because of honored age of time, honored passage of time. But you, on the other hand, you still have your faculties. And um, it's so important for us to commend or commit rather to writing or to recording uh, memories before we lose our, our mental faculties or, you know, memory cells before they are, uh, for instance, um, diminished in, in capacity. So again, thank you very much. You yeah, are the lady in red. <laughs> red is for victory and you are the lady in red. So God bless you. Thank you. And we look Thank forward you. to celebrating that big day very soon. I know. You know, my mother is here. She's 97 and she's here with me. Outstanding. Can I see her? I'd like to say hello to her, if that's possible. Mommy. Mommy. Look. 97. That's amazing. Mommy, sit down and, and say hello to Christian. Come, say hello to Mr. Christian. Sit down. Say hello to Mr. Christian. Sit down. Good morning. Hello, good morning, Miss um, Abel. How are you? I am fine, thank you. Oh, you look strong and and, and beautiful. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, we want to compliment you for raising a wonderful daughter and the son. I know your son Jack. I've known him since I was a child. Very fine man. He's been here to our home with his wife and and. Uh, I remember when my father passed, he said, Christian, man, how come your father passed? You didn't call me, you know, so he knew me very long and you've done a very good job and we thank you and we hope you can make it to a hundred. Okay. <laughs> I hope thank so. You. Of course, of course. <laughs> Next time I will interview her about my God back in the day. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Sometimes I get some of my memories from her. I treat there and I ask her, you remember so-and-so? You remember so-and-so? She said, yes. Well, how do you remember that? You remember that is true. <laughs> and that is how you do. All right, Christian, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.